Kibo guys. What up, guys? This is Kibo guys. Back here again with another achievement guide. Today we're going to be focusing on Nexoria Dungeon Rogue Heroes. This game is only four dollars and ninety nine cents, and it's an easy two thousand gamer score. Wait, what? Two thousand gamer score? Yeah, guys, you guys better get used to it. There's a bit of a story behind why this got an additional 1,000 gamer score. I want to take a moment to explain what happened here because two specific publishers deserve credit. Now, those that are familiar with my channel know that I've been running an experiment with a publisher named Zitalon on whether easy achievements affect sales on indie titles. So little by little, they've been updating the achievements on their older games with easier 1,000 gamer scores. And I can tell you guys right now, achievements do affect sales. Eventually, this is going to result in a video called do easy achievements affect sales and it will be backed by some numbers and sales percentage increases when you know developers or publishers either fixed their achievements or made them easier now with all of the success that Zitalon was having by updating their older titles with easier achievements I let them know about one specific developer named Grim Talon. They published a game called Elena Temple, and that game was the first indie game that I ever seen that added an additional 1000 gamer score in a free update. Grim Talon actually has some really awesome people over there. I covered their game on my channel, and I reached out to them and asked them some questions on how they added the additional 1000 gamer score in a free update. Not only that, but I linked them up with Zitalon because Zitalon was interested in finding out on how you can add that additional 1000 gamer score. So I connected those two and Grim Talon deserves mad credit because they didn't keep that info to themselves. They were willing to give that information over to Zitalon in effort to make the achievement community happy because the achievement community really supported Elena Temple and that's why they added the 1000 gamer score in the first place. So now that Zitalon knows how to add an additional 1000 gamer score into their games, they taught Turnox how to do it. Turnox is the developer of this game, Nixoria. It's actually the first game published by them. Congratulations to them for publishing their first game. Previously, Zitalon was publishing all of their games. Games like Invert, Bullet Beat, and their pride and joy, Time Umadi. So mad props to Turnox for publishing their first game. Not only that, but taking the advice of Zitalon and making the achievements easier in Nexoria. Not only that, but adding the additional 1000 gamer score as well. So yeah guys, long story short, just know that there are a lot more 2000 gamer score games on the way. I have a lot more to say about this, but I'm going to be making a video about it. So let's go ahead and get started on Nexoria and the new 2000 gamer score update. Now, first things first, they actually added an easy difficulty like two weeks ago in an update. When the game first launched, you couldn't change the difficulty. Now you can change it to easy, which makes the completion a lot easier. Now, besides changing the difficulty to easy, you want to make sure that you go to new game and not quick play. So when you first start off the game, you're going to have to choose four characters to play with. Personally, I just went with the characters with the most strength. I think the character with the most strength is going to be the warrior, which is the cat character. And then I picked the three uh, little girl characters in the center. Uh, the one with the white hair, the one with the red hair, and the one with the pink hair. Um, the one with the uh, red hair is especially important. That's the explosion girl, and she has a bomb that does a ton of damage. So if anything, just make sure that you pick the character with the red hair. Now, one of the first things I want to point out is you want to play this game with the D-pad. I found that it was nearly impossible to play it with the thumbsticks. I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning of this video, um, but the game is going to take about anywhere from one to two hours to get the full completion. For the base 1000 gamer score, you just have to complete the first dungeon, which includes the first five levels. However, with the new update, you have to get up to 250 kills, and you have to make sure you get up to level 10. I think the level 10 achievement was part of the base 1000, but the more grindier one is for killing 250 enemies. To do this, you're going to have to play through the first dungeon a couple times. The reason that I don't recommend going past the first dungeon is because there's no achievements related to the other dungeons. There's actually a brand new achievement related to facing the dragon boss. And the way that you face the dragon boss is that you have to complete the first dungeon three times. After you've completed it two times, the third time you're going to face the dragon at the end of the dungeon. Now, as you can see, this is a turn-based role-playing game. 
and it has uh, dungeon crawling and roguelite mechanics. So don't rely on you know going the same place I go in the dungeon because your dungeon is going to be different than my dungeon. So I'm mostly going to be focusing on summarizing this completion for you guys. Ultimately, the summary is you have to complete the first dungeon three times in effort to face the dragon boss. But I do have a little trick. After you complete the dungeon for the first time, aka the first five levels, it spits you back to the main menu and you can press continue and you're going to play level five of the first dungeon over again. So you can do this twice in effort to play the dragon boss without having to play through the first dungeon a full three times. However, the thing is, is we have that achievement for 250 kills and for leveling up to level 10. So more than likely, you're going to have to play the first dungeon. Ultimately, I think that that's the last achievement that you guys are going to end up getting is the one for killing 250 enemies. Now, what you're looking at right now is I'm in a battle with Mimic. A Mimic is a fake treasure chest. It's a treasure chest that you try to open and it ended up being an enemy. After we defeat our first Mimic treasure chest, we're going to get an achievement for doing so. They're typically pretty easy to defeat. There we go. That's the achievement called Mimic worth 50 gamer score. Now, sometimes while walking through the dungeon, you're going to get prompted to buy things. Typically, I just pressed the option that was to buy nothing. I didn't find myself needing to buy anything, not even any potions or anything like that, just because we're on the easiest difficulty. If you run into a prompt that asks you to run, don't move, or evaluate the situation, I always press evaluate the situation, and if for some reason that doesn't work, um, you can press whatever you want. Worst case scenario, you end up in a battle and you need to defeat 250 enemies anyhow. If for some reason you want to skip any of these battles, let's say you reach 250 enemies before you face the dragon, you can always leave or escape any battle, kind of like Pokemon. The thing is, once again, you need to get 250 kills, so there's no point in avoiding any battles anyways. You want to rack up those kills. Now, you're going to find that you get prompts for a lot of options. Typically, again, it doesn't matter what you pick. Worst case scenario, you get in a battle. Um, I always ended up, by the time I played it for a while at least, just picking the first option available. If you happen to be someone that reads every single prompt, this is definitely going to turn into a lengthier completion for you. Now all of these bows, um, I think they're bows, whatever they are, they represent battles. So if you walk over one of those, you're going to end up in a battle with enemies. The key to each of these levels is to find the bow that represents the boss of that level of the dungeon. If you defeat the boss, you'll have access to the stairs to go either up or down in the dungeon, basically to the next level in the dungeon. Each dungeon has five levels, so each dungeon has five bosses. There's a boss after each level. Now, in terms of battle, I recommend using each character's special attack, which is typically the fifth icon from the left. Um, you can also use the first icon, which has a sword on it, and that's your basic attack. That hurts most of the enemies, however, there are some enemies that do not take any damage to that regular sword attack, so you do have to mix it up. If you find that your enemy isn't taking any damage to the attack, mix up the attack. Maybe try to throw a bomb or some projectiles or something like that. The girl with the white hair has a special attack right here, this white orb, and I found that those were very useful. They bounce off of the ceilings if they don't hit any enemies, and um, I found that that's useful, especially for the enemies that are standing all the way to the right. Now, for the most part, all of the boss battles are pretty consistent, except for level three. Level three has two different bosses. It's a 50-50 chance whether you'll face the witch or not, and the witch is the one that has an achievement related to it. This boss right here is called the Athlete. He is the boss of level one in dungeon one. So level 1.1, pretty easy to defeat. Um, again, try to use your special powers for each of the characters. He may spawn that barricade in front of himself in effort to protect himself. You can destroy that or you can like throw projectiles that will go over the thing. Um, however, it's pretty easy to destroy, so just destroy it so you can start hitting him again. If one of your characters dies, it's totally fine. You actually need one of your characters to die because you need to find a new group member uh, to get an achievement. And you can only do that if you have an open slot. So you want to make sure that one of your characters dies at least once if you want that full 2,000 gamer score. Um, once they die, you pretty much just walk around and eventually you're going to run into a team member that you can add to your team. That one's ultimately pretty easy as long as you know that you need to let one of your characters die. 
Now, once you defeat the athlete, you're going to unlock an achievement worth 100 gamer score. As you can see, I was the first person to unlock that one. That one is a new achievement that they added. Previously, there was no achievement for defeating the athlete. And now we are on to the second level in the dungeon. Now, if you have found that the light around you is flashing or it's dim and you can't really see where you're going, it's because you need to rest. You need to press Y to rest or go to the rest screen. And once you get to this screen with the campfire, you're going to have to press select to pull up your inventory and you're going to have to satisfy the hunger and sanity of your characters. Once you do that, you'll be able to rest and once you get rest again, you'll finally be able to see where you're going again. Now you can go ahead and feed your characters even if their hunger is at 100%, you can keep feeding them. I recommend doing this because there's an achievement related to eating enough meals. Um, you have to eat 33 meals total for an achievement worth 33 gamer score. So just make sure that you uh, feed them 33 different food items. The candy does count. The candy uh, is what triggered one of the ones I popped so the achievement I know on. that qualifies as food, at least in terms of this achievement. Now, as you can see, this slime looking boss is the boss in level two. There's no achievement or trophy related to defeating this boss, but we do need to defeat him. Now, once you get to level three, you have a 50-50 chance of facing the witch at the end of this level. The dev is the one that told me that. And again, more than likely, you guys are going to have to play through this first dungeon, meaning the first five levels, at least two times. So if you don't face the witch the first time, don't worry about it. Maybe in your second playthrough, you'll face the witch. Now, as you can see, I was one uh, group member down. And as I was walking through the dungeon, I found a new group member. So that unlocked that achievement. Now, obviously, you can choose to avoid some of these fights or go to all of the fights and participate in every single one of them. If you choose to participate in all of the fights, you're going to get the 250 kills in a lesser amount of playthroughs versus if you are just playing fights here and there, you might end up needing three full playthroughs of the first dungeon or first five levels. And same goes with leveling up. If you choose to participate in all of the battles, you're going to reach level 10 in a lesser amount of playthroughs. Now, some of the new achievements that got added are the ones related to kills. You get an achievement once you get 50 kills, 150 kills, 200 kills, and then 250 kills. Besides that, the only additional achievements added was the one that they added for defeating the athlete, the first boss. There's also one for defeating the fourth boss now, which wasn't previously in there before. That's for defeating Shohand. Shohand is the fourth boss. Right now, um, you just see me defeat the witch. The witch is the third boss, but again, the third boss is randomized. You don't get a set boss at the end of the third level. You either face the witch or the cyclops boss. There is no achievement related to the cyclops boss. So if you get that boss, I believe you could press start and quit to the main menu, and then you can go ahead and press continue, and you'll start back at the beginning of that level. However, again, you're going to have to play the game at least two different times in the first dungeon, so you might as well wait till the second playthrough and see if you find the witch on the second playthrough. You'd have to have pretty bad chances to get the Cyclops boss twice in a row, being that the dev told me it's a 50-50 chance. Now, after you defeat the third boss, you're going to get an achievement called Triple worth 120 gamer score for completing three levels of the first dungeon. Next boss on level four is called Shohand. This boss never changes. Regardless, every single time you're going to face the Shohand boss at the end of level four. After you defeat him, it's going to unlock an achievement worth 200 gamer score. That's one of the ones that they just added in the new 1000 gamer score edition. And yeah, that one didn't have an achievement before. Previously, you did not unlock an achievement for defeating him. Next is level five. At the end of level five, you're going to face um, Sir Fallen Star, I think is his name. It's the night boss. And um, once you defeat him, you should get your achievement. Um, once you get to the ending cutscene, that one is called Winner, worth 200 gamer score for completing a whole dungeon. Now again, the game has four dungeons total. We only need to mess with the first dungeon to get all of the achievements, the full 2000 gamer score. Again, we have to face the dragon boss. The only thing is to trigger the dragon boss. You need to complete the first dungeon, aka the first five levels, three times. On the third time, you'll face the dragon boss at the end. 
rather than the night boss. Now, as you can see, the achievement trackers work, which is awesome because you can see how much kills you're at. Besides the kill-related achievements, the only achievements that I had left was for the witch. I ended up getting that on my second playthrough, and then kill the dragon. Unfortunately, with the new update, at least right now, this one is unobtainable. I have confirmed with the dev. They said they already figured it out, and they're working on pushing out an update. But yeah, sadly, um, as of posting this video, that one is unobtainable, but... Again, the dev has already confirmed that they're working on it, so that should be out soon. This is what the dragon boss looks like. Um, ultimately, he's pretty easy to defeat. You just need to make sure that you use your uh, special powers when you can. If those aren't available, then just use your regular sword attack. Um, I didn't find that I had any characters die while playing the boss. You just need to make sure that if your characters are low on health, that you make sure that you eat something in effort to recharge your HP. Again, a little trick to play the dragon faster if you don't want to play through the first dungeon three times is after you complete the dungeon, you can press continue and it's going to start you off at level five of the dungeon. So you can do this two times and by the time you do it two times, you'll face the dragon. I've confirmed with the dev and this should work and this should unlock the achievement after the patch. But even then, I found that I still needed to play through the first dungeon a couple times in effort to get my achievement for 250 kills. Got it right there. I think I was in my third playthrough of the first dungeon, guys, before I got it. Personally, this uh, completion or 2000 gamer score took me almost two hours. So it's definitely a little bit longer than the original completion, but it's also double the gamer score. And then finally, the last achievement I ended up unlocking was for getting to level 10. If you're interested in seeing more developers add an additional 1000 gamer score to indie titles, let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers. We just hit 15 patrons. I'd like to give a special shout out to everybody in the biggest fan club, including Tim G84, AOJ, The Gasbliss, Purple Rain 6, and Blackbird. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.